Sparks. Hey, it is the Pete Souza Show coming to you live. I am out here in Fort Fun, Fort Collins, baby. Uh, big game tonight, actually. Uh, Wyoming and Colorado State. I'm out here doing some freelance work for CBS Sports, which anytime I get to be around the game of college football, it is a total treat uh, getting in here today. I'm staying at this um, this Hilton Hotel, and this morning I got in really late last night, and I got in this um, I got up this morning, and there's all this chatter outside my window, and I'm like, what is going on out there? There's people like you can tell there's like a cadence, right? Um, a formation. Uh, is lined up outside as I look down over to, it's kind of like an industrial area behind the hotel. And lo and behold, it's the Colorado State football team. They were out there like doing some kind of warm up, maybe over here before a meeting or a walkthrough. And I was like, why would the whole team be out here um, doing this? Because you stay at a hotel, right? College football teams, uh, even when you're playing at home in a big game, major programs, even when I was at Richmond, we would stay at a hotel uh, off campus the night before a game because you just kind of – you basically want to get everybody away from the distractions. There are enough distractions around your team when they're playing at home uh, just without changing where you're going to stay. So staying at a hotel can eliminate a lot of those distractions. One of those this morning, maybe for the Colorado State football team, was some man peering out his window. Um, I didn't even have a robe on, but don't worry. I had I had my jammies on. And I was looking down, and I was like, hey, what's – What's going on? So I noticed they were like doing like the one, two, three. They were like limbering up. And then I figured out knowing this because when I was a freshman at Richmond, obviously I didn't play. Um, and uh, we um, we would do like freshmen would have to do all kinds of stuff just to kind of get you up and get you moving around the freshmen that weren't going to play. And I counted like 50 some guys, 45. So I figured this is probably freshmen or walk ons or guys who basically are starting to get some kind of work out. And at least that was my theory. Um, but it's, it's kind of cold out this morning. So I was surprised I didn't see him with like an indoor facility or something. Maybe there were guys that were in trouble. I have no idea. Not starting rumors. But that's how I got up this morning. Hope you got up and uh, had a great day and had a chance to listen to Cam. Um, I uh, uh, this, this rivalry, I won't, you know, not bore you, but I won't get too into Colorado State and Wyoming. So it's a deal. 125th year of the border war. Tonight. And um, so 125 years of that. Um, for me, we are coming up on, we're one week away, uh, the anniversary of Mike Tyson being in my life for 38 years. Uh, uh, November 22nd, 1986 is when he won the WBA title. Or what was it? Let me make sure I got this right. It was the WBC title. Um, Scotty, when I do that, you can still see me, right? Let's wait for Scotty. Yes. There he is, Swingler. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll go away and then I'm going to bring you back in a second. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I got Scotty right where I want him, which is, per which is perfect. Also, of course, we want to uh, thank Slovacic. I got away from myself. I'm not used to being out here on the road doing this. But honestly, look forward to um, – this is a, a way that we'll be doing stuff now, especially the basketball season has started. And I got a game um, – I got a couple games coming up here, so we'll be doing this um, through December and then probably a lot more January, February, March. Um, but – so Mike Tyson, 38 years, right? It's been in my life. And I was nine years old when he beat Trevor Burbick for the WBC title. And at that point in time – it was there were there were when you're a young guy like me back then and then the way that um the news got to us right like you would hear even even me um living outside of philadelphia you started to hear about this guy um this boxer who was like it was like a myth you know it was a rumor um and then you see him um and he absolutely destroys trevor burbeck i mean i i, I don't remember being up watching the fight but i remember seeing um highlights and it was, always, it was even hard to see highlights then because a lot of these uh, matches were, were pay-per-view. So it, even an opportunity to see Trevor Burbick, just like this gigantic man, have no control over his body as he wanted to get back up uh, when Tyson had ultimately knocked him out for good in the TKO. Um, and what round? Let's see. Sorry you have to look at me that way when I pull up like that. 
It was a TKO. Um, doesn't say. Oh, yeah, in the second round. <laughs> it's with 235 left in the second round. So uh, imagine that, right? Um, so he, he, he beat him in, you know, six minutes pretty much. <laughs> and uh, that was, to me, like sort of a life-changing experience where I, I – I mean, I, I growing up, I, I want to say I remember where I was for almost every Tyson title fight or even some later in his career that weren't title fights. Uh, so this is a guy who was so in my life for such a long time. And then he became this dude that, you know, he, he, he was he would tell you he was a bad guy. He did terrible things, even when um, obviously the rape ac accusation that ultimately became a conviction in Indianapolis. Uh, he, he told Jim Gray, he said, Hey, Mr. Gray, I didn't, I didn't do this. I didn't rape this woman. Um, but I have done several other things, right. Um, that have been just as bad, if not worse. So I'm, I'm right where, you know, I'm probably right where I'm supposed to be. And it didn't end there. I mean, Mike Tyson has received this, amazing amount of grace from society because of how vulnerable he has been. Um, this is a guy who years ago, we were just waiting on the news that he was, he, he would have been pronounced dead or something awful would have happened. I mean, that's where we were going. And, you know, he was like sober, found sobriety. This is like around 2010, 2011, even when he was in, um, whatchamacallit, the hangover, he was still like in a really bad way, life-wise. And he, he's very open about that drugs and alcohol. So he found sobriety. And then he's not like, look, I'm sober. Like, he's not totally sober because he talks openly about, at least like my kind of sober. He talks openly about mushrooms and and and, and a lot, a lot of marijuana. Mm. And so, but still, like, his life has totally changed. He's like, obviously, like, got this spirit coming through him. And uh, people love to see Mike Tyson. Like, even like someone like my mom who knew um, all the trouble he was causing and trouble he was in. Like, people just love to see, I don't want to see everyone because some of his behavior in the past has been abhorrent. And remember now, he did pay his debt to society, but certain people uh, may have not forgiven him. And, I, and that's totally understandable. But a lot of people have. And that's a really interesting commentary on society because um, this is a guy, again, I keep saying this is a guy, um, but he was a dead man walking after he was trouble wherever he walked and uh, his career ended unceremoniously. He hasn't fought since 2005. Now he is 58 years old. Let's get to the fight at hand. And by the way, anybody that doesn't know that didn't grow up watching Ty Mike Tyson, like the baddest man on the planet stuff is true. That's why I'm sitting here talking about him th 38 years later. That's why there's a, an amazing amount of interest to see this 58 year old man fight. I don't know, by the way, I can't think of an athlete, an athlete who has performed at such a high level, an elite level that has been in our lives now in competition for so long. This is now the body of work. I mean, and his career, his fight career goes back more than, you know, the 38 years I remember. He had been boxing professionally, I think, for two years prior to that. So let's say 40 years as a pro at what he does. I don't know that anybody spanned that that time. Now, of course, he's been out of it, but I guess the ability to command um, this type of attention and this type of payday, he's, he's going to make $20 million for this fight. Jake Paul is slated to make $40 million. And again, back to the fight tonight, Mike Tyson is an underdog. Um, again, hasn't fought since 2005. And even then, it wasn't something that was, you know, we were all excited. Every, by the way, I am that person that I drink the Mike Tyson juice every single time. And what I mean by that is, like, I feel like he can win tonight. I still, and this is, uh, we call this um, delusions of grandeur, right? Uh, because I still have, or euphoric recall. That's what we call it in addiction, euphoric recall. I still have in my mind that memory of Mike Tyson walking into the ring and, and, and beating Michael Spinks in like 60, 90 seconds, right? Like, really, that's that's the memory that I have. That euphoria that that event brought me has me a prisoner of that moment for the rest of my life. And look, it wasn't just that fight. He did damage. He dispatched guys very early 
in fights. And you can go Google it, YouTube it, whatever you want to do. ESPN's been doing a great job of running some of his greatest hits uh, leading up to this fight. And it is amazing. I mean, he would have – like his – his fist would just detonate somebody's somebody's face, and it, w- it was amazing. So, obviously, that's the interest of Mike Tyson. For me, it's not like oh, like I'm 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 not, I don't think he's going to bite Jake Paul's ear tonight. I'm just hoping he kicks his ass. Um, that's the Mike Tyson that I look forward to seeing. There was a time when people were so uh, captured and it was so alluring how much of a disaster he was. Like I don't I don't see that right now. Um, I see that as people want to see him uh, succeed. I, I, I believe that as much as that might be an unpopular opinion to have, I think more people, let me just move this down a little bit, a lot of headroom. Um, I think more people uh, think that Mike Tyson, let's go back. You want to see my jeans on the couch. There you go. Uh, more people, I'll move them. There you go. So more people um, are, are rooting for him to do well, a lot more than are rooting for him to lose or to do something crazy or, are just going to stay away. Um, again, I think his vulnerability has brought a lot of folks back under the tent. Um, when someone can admit to all their faults and not try to explain them away, just admit to them, um, it is something that is really uh, it's disarming. I mean, it re- it's 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 something that's brought a lot of people back. So tonight's fight, um, Jake Paul, ten and one. Uh, that's his record. He's fought a lot of MMA, uh, former MMA guys or current MMA guys, and a lot of like newcomers into the world of boxing. Paul is scheduled or slated to make forty million dollars. Uh, and I have a story I can tell you about Jake Paul that came that, that is uh, a pretty interesting source, pretty interesting deal. So Van Lathan, but right right now I'm aggregating from the Bill Simmons uh, podcast. Van Lathan who I love, 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 was talking to Simmons and he was talking about Mike Tyson fighting uh, Jake Paul. And and Van boxes at a gym in L.A., like trains there to get in shape. And, uh, you know, because he's Van Lathan, he knows, like, everybody out there in L.A., having worked at TMZ and now he's at the ringer. So Van said there was a a professional boxer in there. Uh, And this was, he didn't name the boxer, the pro boxer, but this was a gym where Jake Paul trained. And this professional boxer was kind of like, dude, I just want to kill this guy. I want to get in the ring with Jake Paul and destroy him. And he he kind of made that known. And eventually this guy ended up sparring with Jake Paul and Jake Paul would come in there with like his whole like entourage. And that's just how, that's just how Jake Paul rolls. You know, that's his whole thing and whatever. Um, So this guy, obviously his resentment and disdain for Jake Paul and everything he represents continued to evolve. So finally he, this is again, a pro boxer, a guy who's been boxing since he's 13. Uh, you know, not Jake Paul, this other guy, this this heavyweight. And, uh, you know, pictures of this guy boxing when he's like 12, right? That's what Van Lathan said. And he gets in the ring with Jake Paul, and Jake Paul destroys him. And and I, like, Van Lathan's one of those dudes I just trust. He was there. It's a firsthand commentary on the deal. And I think that that is why, as it always goes back to Vegas, right, that Jake Paul is a favorite. Mike Tyson, if you want to bet, bet on him, is plus 160. All I want to do is bet on Mike Tyson. But I think if I bet on Mike Tyson, he's going to lose. My betting on him has nothing to do with it, but – or maybe it does. No, but um, I am going to be rooting so hard for Mike Tyson um, that I – I, I don't need I don't need to pour any 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 gasoline under the fire. Um, I'm super pumped. I love Mike Tyson. I love the aura of Mike Tyson. I think I love that uh, he was just one of those. He he you're, he was just such a badass um, when I was a kid, and we saw some of that last night. Now, Scotty, uh, uh, jo- join me here, please. There he is, Swingler, back in the home office. So, Scotty, last night at the weigh-in. Uh, Jake, Jake Paul does some sort of army crawl towards Mike Tyson. And in, in doing so, I mean, we've all seen the video by now, but in doing so, uh, he he puts his hand, or no, his, his foot steps on Mike Tyson's foot as he starts to come up to do like the fight pose nose to nose. And Tyson, it's like that millisecond where he was like, I can't, I, I really believe, I don't know that he even wanted to do it. I think he was like, 
<laughs> Mike Tyson can't can't allow this right now. We're yeah, pure speculation land, right? But I sure. believe like there was a second where he was like, no, I can't. It's almost like that. And Tyson will talk about this, that prison mentality. Like you walk into the room, you find the biggest guy there and you try to kick his ass because that's how you survive. Like there yeah. was no way he could allow that. Now you, Scotty Swingler, you think that was fake. I told you I'm 50, 50 on it, Pete. I don't, I don't want to commit hardcore one side or the other, you know, uh, Tyson said himself, it was because. Paul stepped on his foot and it, and it hurt. And so he reacted by, you know, popping yeah. him back. Um, I saw some people on Twitter wanted to make it a race thing, but I, I don't think oh, I want to go there. Um, but, but d- dude, like, I think that's, what's going to be hard about this. By the, way, by the way, why is that a race then? Because he was crawling at him, you know, oh, that, good that, God, that, can, Miss Molly. That, that can be misread the wrong yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, but anyway, uh, I think the hard thing about this fight tonight, depending on how it goes, and it's the same with that weigh-in drama, is depending on how it goes, you are never going to convince all of America that it's not scripted. Like, there there are some people who are just going to believe these guys are getting paid to put on a good show and to act for the cameras and make their bag. And, um, you know... That's not a crazy. That's not a crazy conspiracy theory, by the way. No, like, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so, so here's the question: how, how how old are you? I'm 32. 32. Wow. You get the you get your whole life ahead of you, pal. And I hope so. Dad, this is it. It's all in front of you, Scotty. Alrighty. Okay. So, okay. So, but 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 so you are from. Uh, you're very familiar with Jake Paul, more so than I think people my age or even a little below. Are you know people in their late thirties, early forties, not quite as in touch with him as someone like you. Not that you followed him or you were like you know a subscriber. Yeah, to his I was going to say I'm a lot. I'm a lot less familiar than even a lot of people my age, though, because mm-hmm. there's just because his content and the way he got famous is not something I consume. No, and it's well, it's not something that I think you or I endorse. He's another guy who I think has like sort of received a second round of grace in a way because like there was kind of a lot of crappy stuff that went on there, but like, there's no, we're not here to litigate that. Uh, But it's, it's all fake, right? Like the whole, the whole thing is like drummed up. Right. This whole deal. Like it's, it's supposedly real life, but it's not, he's, it's like the wrestling of, of YouTube kind of. Right. Right. Like how can I like top that last thing I did? And you know, this is, See, with Tyson, a lot of it was crazy train wreck stuff, right, that I witnessed, like my generation. Um, and it was real, as yeah. crazy as it was. You know, yeah. like, yeah, sure, he knew how to sell a fight. And there was a lot of stuff, like, even, like, when he was, like, the quote-unquote baddest man on the planet. But, like, they were they they, they were they were worried he was going to lose. Like, he came out of prison. He didn't have he, – he wasn't the same. And they even – I remember they even – there were rumors he they gave Lennox Lewis four million dollars just to stay away, so he didn't have to fight him, so we mm. could keep fighting bums like Bruce Seldon and Andrew Galata, so he could continue not Andrew Galata, um, Francois Botha, so he could continue just to just to win and kind of lather up at, at at a prison and ramp up to a big payday with Lennox Lewis. But but I so it's it's this clash of two worlds almost, and I'm gonna mm. don't worry, I'm not lumping you in Jake Paul world. But like, you know, there, there really is this two, these two different experiences tonight that are colliding, because I think that your point, that's why I wanted to talk with you about it on the air, is a very good one. Like, there's a lot of people that are like, come on, dude, I'm not buying this. And I'm surprised that more people um, around my age or, or older, um, are, they're, they're not tapped into that. I, I have not heard mm. as much like this is fake, because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm sitting here right now. With looking at uh, odds on my betting odds, right, right. right? So like, and, and look, well, this would not be the first boxing fight to have all kinds of chicanery attached to it. Well, but that's that's why I said it. It kind of depends on how the fight goes tonight, right? Like, like Tyson comes out and knocks Paul out in twenty seconds. That's not scripted. Like, like that's that's Mike Tyson going back to being Iron Mike, right? But yeah, you know, if it goes the distance and it looks like. They're running around each other and Paul's running away. And then, you know, Paul lands a shot and Tyson lands a shot and they both look exhausted. And we go to the judges. Everybody's going to be saying those guys mailed it in and got their bag. Like that's, that's going to be the narrative. Um, That's why I really hope, I really hope regardless of who wins, there's it's, I don't want it to go to a decision. 
Like I want, I want someone to put someone else on the mat and, and let's, let's call it like, that's, that's what I want to see, you know? And I was going to say one of the things about my generation. So I, I came into adulthood with what I would say were the last two real stars in boxing, which was Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. That was, oh. that was me, me coming into adulthood was being aware of them, but otherwise like my generation just writ large is not um, into the boxing like generations before were like I yeah. I told you this last week I knew who Mike Tyson was because I had punch out when I was a kid like that that was my familiarity with Mike Tyson he was the final boss right like um, most of my generation if you asked about boxing we could say Ali Foreman Tyson Mayweather and beyond that we're, we're all we're pretty uneducated honestly so I I kind of love uh that we're all going to at least remember this Tyson fight. Yeah. And we're all going to kind of dive back into this world for, for, for one evening. And right. Right. It's, it's, it's interesting that boxing has a lot, you know, and I guess like we know why, right. Cause MMA, cause, cause of all, all the, the, the Oh you and, yeah. UFC has is with my yeah. peers is easily the, that's the preference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it really sort of, it even, piggybacked on on boxing because because the thing about boxing right if you're walking down the street and and or you're driving and there's on the side of the road there's two guys fighting each other like you've got my attention like that's as basic as it gets that's human instinct yes i'm going so, to see i'm going to see gladiator 2 next week because <laughs> it is human instinct to watch that crap yes yes and so it's <laughs> playing out in real time around you yeah, and 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 you mentioned it like UFC just they they took all the padding off of it or, or just you know just completely stripped it down and it's bare bones like the two guys on the street almost now, and you know I don't know if that's it or because of the the management of, of of a lot of these these uh, boxers it just hasn't gone well and and, and it was so phony um, and there was so much bullshit going on behind the scenes for so long that they had to get away from that. You know, the Don Kings and, and, and those yeah, real, yeah. real shadowy figures that were around boxing. Well, and bo I think boxing could come back, but it needs a star and to have a star, it needs a good story. And we just yeah. haven't, we haven't had that. I told you the last, the last boxing match I remember watching was when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather. Like yeah. that. And, and, and that again, was 2017 was, or 2018. It was a long time ago. Right. And yeah. it was, it was the, the crossover appeal, the intrigue of that UFC fighter against this undefeated, you know, legend of boxing. So, I mean, you're right. Um, I think, I think you're spot on with, with your analysis there. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll pay some bills. I'm going to come back. Uh, talk about a couple more things, some football stuff. Uh, and then, of course, it is Friday. So we got all in, baby. Corey Dickman is back. Um, by the way, my Eagles won last night. Saquon Barkley. I mean, God, I, I, it's a shame, man. Giants fans, you guys must be really kicking yourselves. I watched and, – and to watch, I watched the game on the plane. By the way, pats off to American Airlines. Like, they, they must have a deal with the NFL. I can figure this out if I – spend five seconds researching it but i just like like you get on the plane you turn on your free wi-fi entertainment and the first icon you see is amazon thursday night football you know the logo jalen hurts uh Jaden daniels right um almost similar to the the thumbnail we made on yesterday's segment about the game which is a must listen still it's evergreen even though we picked the game matt davis picked it wrong by the way all right we'll be back on the other side of the break thanks to Crawford Austin Properties, of course, Slovacics. Cannot forget about D1, Daniel Stark Injury Lawyer, Socorro Family Ford. And we talk a little bit about First National Bank of Central Texas with Corey in our last segment. Dan Ingham didn't make it out to, uh, this week in person, but we'll have him back in studio next week. For now, we'll step aside. Coming right back. The Pete Souza Show, powered by the Rogue Media Network, marches on after this. It's the Pete Souza Show. Sports, sports, sports. Nobody tells our stories better than our clients. The difference 